During my time on the investigations team, I have probably spent the bulk of my time on one sweeping epic. How is it that someone uh, who most people have never heard of seems to have um, so much influence uh, with public office holders? Well, it's this guy, Spiro Papathanasakis. Spiro Papathanasakis. It all started back in 2014 when I was working with the education reporter, Caroline Alfonso, looking at some problems at the Toronto District School Board, Canada's largest school board. So in the course of describing those problems, which as centered on you know ver various governance issues and various issues about the accounting, Somebody said to me, one of my sources said to me, well, you, re you really got to look at, you got to look at the big fish here, you know, there's, and I said, okay, and who is that? And this person said, well, it's this guy, Spiro Papathanasakis. I was working on a totally separate story that had nothing to do uh, with this individual, and his name came up in an interview um, uh, in a very strange way about um, rumblings about organized crime and influence. And it was one of those strange moments in the newsroom um, at the Globe, like we're lucky that we work in a very collaborative environment. And um, three other, three colleagues, three other reporters working on totally separate stories had also encountered this name on stories they were working on, Spiro Papathanasakis, and um, how he seemed to be able to exert a lot of power over various government institutions. We did a piece on sort of the, the background influence of Spiro Papathanasakis at the school board. He went on a trip to China with the chairman and the director of education. This was a, an official school board trip and he was on this trip. Nobody ever explained what he was doing there. That story ran and then as a result of that some, some tips came in. We started getting brown envelopes saying maybe you should look at this, maybe you should look at that and call came in and then from there it just it just suddenly we found ourselves going back 20 years to where it all began and that was at a hospital. In about 1998 he was engaged um, in efforts to oust the chief executive officer of Toronto East General Hospital. That was a hospital that was just rocked by enormous governance problems. The, um, the entire board was overthrown and lo and behold Spiro was behind it. And uh, that's sort of the beginning of, as far as we've been able to trace back, um, the beginning of his sort of uh, his uh, underground influence. He pretty much plays the role of like an, an unregistered underground lobbyist. There's a lot of evidence that he was involved in lobbying on behalf of a uh, controversial um, City of Toronto contract that was given out uh, to a company called OMG Media. And uh, it became a very uh, uh, controversial uh, contract when it emerged in 2003 um, that members of the Montreal Mafia, uh, specifically um, the head of, of the Sicilian Mafia in Canada, Vito Rizzuto, was identified as um, an owner of the company. Sometimes he's playing he's playing a role in maybe helping people he knows get the get the a competitive edge in winning a contract, and that's what happened again at the school board with a, a major solar contract, the largest solar contract ever awarded in Canada. And sure enough, two people he's close to ended up um, winning that contract. He has never been, nobody has ever officially identified him as being behind some of, the, some of the problems until now. Somebody might wonder why does it take, um, you know, uh, one or two or three Globe and Mail reporters this long to, to write, to do this story? Well, first of all, we, it was, you know, we weren't just working on that exclusively, but also some of the sources we've talked to like numerous times. Predominantly what we've done is conducted a lot of interviews because uh, a lot of this stuff is quite historical and uh, documents, whenever, whenever time passes, documents are harder to come by. We also filed numerous freedom of information requests, but fortunately, because we've been at this so long, like on the school board side, we've been able to augment those freedom of information documents with 
documents that um, many of our sources have also provided to us. What his story has revealed to us is that there is an underground system where through word of mouth somehow, um, people who on paper have nothing to do with lobbying or, or uh, don't even hold, uh, promote their services as lobbyists are serving in this capacity and it's a blind spot for the system. Maybe it's time to hold a few more public inquiries, you know. Um, I know people think they're time consuming and they're expensive, but maybe it's a lot more costly to have all of these problems play out at a public institution that is funded by taxpayers' dollars. I do hope that um, we can set the record straight about, um, about these events because a lot of these events were covered in the media at the time that they took place. Spiro Papathanasakis' name is, is nowhere in the coverage. For reasons that are unclear to me, he's been able to fly under the radar um, in all of these events. And I think that a very influential and, uh, and critical um, figure in the history of Toronto and Ontario politics has gone unnoticed as a result.